What's up guys, it's Cliff with Pure Pressure here. Uh, today I'm gonna be showing you the differences between dabbing water hash and rosin. I'm also gonna show you some of my favorite tools to use in the process. Now, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies in any way, shape, or form. I actually purchased all this gear with my hard-earned cash, uh, no discounts. Just wanted to show you guys how I like to do it. Uh, so for our first segment, I'm gonna take you through my toolkit. All right, now the next piece is the leisure rig that I picked up from Illusions Glass Gallery. Uh, now the reason I really like this rig is because of the function. Uh, you know, a lot of my friends, they go out and buy heady glass for thousands of dollars. And uh, you know me, I'm, I'm kind of balling on a budget here. So I found uh, the best bang for your buck that I could find at the time. Um, and I stumbled across this leisure and I've been pretty happy with it ever since. So I'll give you a little taste of what the function looks like. All right, so this is one of my favorite nails to use. This is an Evan Shore nail. Um, it's got this cool little design in the bottom. That's the Positive Vibes logo. And that's where I picked up all three of these pieces. So with this nail, I typically like to drop my little turp pearl down in there. I've also got this really cool spinner cap. I think Cripple Hill was the name of the company that made this. Um, but it's really cool because it's just got these channels that go through. There is no hole in the top of your cap. So it was pretty unique and a, a really good price on that, which is why I picked it up. So I'll just uh, set that in there and then I'll give you a little taste of the function whenever I hit it. But you can see that thing really spins. And uh, what I like about Terp Pearls is that it just evenly distributes that oil um, all across your bowl and really just makes for a great tasty experience. All right, so this is a nail that I just picked up. It's a Joel Halen Cold Start Banger. I really love this for smoking hash and uh, taking cold start dabs. It's got such a deep chamber that whenever I put this cap in there, I'm able to just sling that oil all across this line. And I feel like by spreading it all across that bowl, um, I've increased the surface area. And, and maybe that's why I'm getting such tasty hits out of this. But this is uh, definitely one of my favorite nails and certainly one of the most unique with this, uh, this interesting cap he's got on there. This next product is the Terpometer. Uh, this is how I'm able to get consistent heat um, and really tasty dabs every time. So what I do here is I put this end in your actual bowl and now I can read out what the actual surface that I'm gonna drop that concentrate on, what that temperature is. Um, and then once it's reached the perfect temperature, I can just flip that over and have my rosin ready to go on this end and just go ahead and dab away. So this is my ISO cleaning station that I purchased off of Etsy from a company called Colorado Accessories. Uh, basically when I'm smoking my rosin, I will dip my Q-tip down in this alcohol here and clean my bowl out with that. All right, so this is my blazer torch. Um, there's a couple of upgrades that I put on here. First things first is this little cap here uh, that I got from Glob Mops. Um, I also purchased this off of Etsy. And what this helps you with is one-handed turning the torch on. Cause see, otherwise it's, it's really hard for me to flip this just one-handed. But the minute I put this on, I can just use my finger to push that on and off there. And now I can operate it one-handed. Um, I really like how it's got this magnet in the bottom there. So it snaps on, it's really, really nice. Um, the other thing I've upgraded on this is the blast shield. Now the actual torch manufacturer makes this shield. Um, without this, it's really easy to burn yourself. Um, if you see, I've got a little mark here and I know several of my friends that have them themselves. So uh, it's a good way to protect yourself. All right, you can find these dab mats on our website for $12. So this is our newest design, our Skull logo. So we've also got one with mountains and we've also got another one with just the Pure Pressure logo. All right, so this is my lunchbox turned turp pack. I picked this up from Target for like $7. Um, the reason I got this is so I could put a little ice pack in here for when I'm traveling. Cause even just going to and from the dispensary, if I've got some water hash like this here, um, you'll see that it'll go from like your sandy type texture to almost like a, a dough. And uh, I like to just keep it as proper as I can until I get home and so I can put it in the freezer immediately to keep it cool. Today, we've got a straw nana live rosin and a straw nana bubble hash. Uh, this is the exact same strain from the same producer. We figured it'd be cool to show you the differences between the two. Um, 
Now, typically the bubble hash is, is gonna be a little bit more work as far as storing it, keeping it cold. Um, and I'll show you the experience. There's a little bit more contaminant left behind in your bowl, uh, but they're both some of the best dabbing experiences you can have. All right, guys, so first things first, I'm gonna show you the traditional way of dabbing. Um, and I think most people get caught up in the torch and, and this is what really sketches them out about dabbing. But I think something to keep in mind is, I mean, you look at like cigar smokers, they're, they're using torches. Nobody ever thinks that's sketchy. So um, yeah, once you get past the use of the torch, that this really is a, a safe process. So um, typically what you'll do here is flip that torch on, we'll heat our bowl up. I like to go right past that blue tip on the flame when I'm heating it up and make sure that I'm heating the entire bowl consistently. Um, I see a lot of people just leave their torch right here sitting next to it, heating up one spot. And I find I just don't like hot spots on my nail. I like it all to be consistent. So once we've got this nice and heated up, then we're gonna let it start cooling down. Um, a lot of people you'll see like to take really hot dabs, especially if they're just trying to get baked. Um, but for me, man, I, I really like the flavor, um, especially when I've got quality rosin or hash like this, this straw Nana, if I get it down below that 500, I mean, it really can just taste like candy. And, uh, I've always had a sweet tooth. So I think that's probably why I go in a little colder. Um, I certainly recommend colder dabs for people just getting started because, you know, you start taking dabs in the 600 degree range, you're just going to be ripped and uncomfortable, especially if it's your first time. So we're sitting at about 525 now. Honestly, I typically go down to, you know, 450 at times. And if I need to heat it up a little bit more afterwards, I can always do that. But I love those first little flavor hits that you get when you go in at a lower temp. And you know, another thing I see people taking these huge globs online, you know, pace yourself. You're not in a, a rush with anybody. I mean, we've all got friends who can drink more than us and the same is going to go for dabs. You know, this isn't a competition. So, um, you know, take a size that makes you, makes you comfortable. All right. So this is actually a little low at 425, but we're still going to go in, see what we can get here. That's really nice. You can see that pearl just evenly distributing that oil across the surface. <clears throat> so see, I'm not blowing massive clouds, but the flavor is just incredible. And now if I want to come back, you know, I can always heat it up more and get more smoke to produce. So it's not like I lost anything by going in low. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to clean this out. <coughs> Just use a Q-tip here. Soak that up. <coughs> So usually with rosin specifically, I will have a little bit of a film left over, which is weird because when I dab hash, I mean, you'll see here in a second that the bowl's gonna look dirtier. You're gonna see a lot more contaminant down in there. But with hash, I can typically get it clean with just Q-tips. But what I like to do when I'm dabbing rosin, I've got that film across the bowl. I like to dip it down in alcohol. Now, you, you typically wanna wait a little bit to do this because I'll, I'll show you what not to do right now and that's put it in there immediately. Now you hear that, you hear that alcohol that's vaporizing and you can see right here, I've got that alcohol collecting. So the next time I go to hit this, it's gonna taste horrible. So if you're gonna use that alcohol, let it cool down properly before you start going wiping it out unless you uh, wanna vape alcohol, which I certainly don't recommend. And typically after that, I'll come back and give it a once over with the torch. Make sure there's nothing left behind. And that is it.
All right, so for the next segment, we're gonna show you some bubble hash now. Gonna do the same thing here, heat our nail up. Now this is not my favorite way to smoke hash, especially not with a turp pearl, but I just wanna show you guys the difference between hitting hash and rosin. That turp pearl just gets so dirty when you're smoking hash. Um, and typically I like to cold start hash, so we will show you that right after this one. So while that nail is cooling down, I'm gonna take a little bit of hash and I'm gonna put it here in this parchment and I'm gonna make a little hash flag. Now, if I was cold starting, I'd probably just scoop this right into the bowl, but um, I just don't like doing it that way when it's hot already. Just a little bit more difficult to get the perfect dab that I want as far as how much I wanna put in the bowl. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna get that all collected right there. And then I'm gonna heat it up with just my fingers. Make a little hash flag out of this. And then we'll just drop it right in. See if we can get the, the timing right. Yeah, we still got time. So basically I'm just letting this the sand-like texture uh, melt down. So then I can drop a, a glob down in there. There we go, I see that. And I like to try to get this on the back of the dabber just so all that oil doesn't get stuck right there in the groove of that. So, let's see where we're at now. Yep, right at 425 again. Oh yeah, that's delicious. See, the reason I like going in at that lower temperature is I just don't have any charring. I mean, it's it's hard to find a really full melt product on, on shelves currently, so. See, if I wanna come back with my torch, come back and just reheat. But you see, with bubble hash, I've got a lot more plant contaminant down in there, you see, are actually the, the heads of the trichomes, that casing. So what I'm gonna do is scoop all this out, but you'll see my Q-tip's gonna come out a lot more dirty here. And while it does get a lot dirtier, I do find I'm able to get it cleaner with just Q-tips than when I'm smoking rosin, which is really counterintuitive. But that rosin seems to leave a, a little bit of film on the nail.
All right, so the last bow we used, uh, it works great for cold starts, um, but this nail specifically was designed for cold starts. So that's what we're gonna show you today. And you know, cold start is where I definitely recommend everybody start. Um, it's a lot more forgiving, I've found, um, and a lot easier to get a, a nice hit that's not too hot, not too cold. You can kind of control by just watching it. Looks like glass. I don't want it to shatter everywhere. All right, there we go. Drop that down in there. So I like to just feather all around the bottom until I see it bubbling. And that's when I typically start, you know, start hitting. So now, last but certainly not least, we got the melt. We're gonna cold start it and this Joel Halen banger. So since I'm doing a cold start, I will just scoop this straight into the nail, right into the bottom. Probably gonna take a little bit smaller one this time. It's 3.30 on a Wednesday afternoon and I'm ripped after those first three. So, gotta stay awake. keep the flame a little bit further away when I'm doing a cold start, especially with hash. With rosin, it's a lot more forgiving, but with hash, you know, you can have some charring occur if you're not careful. Now, if I wanted, I could come back and heat that up more, but like I said, man, I'm ripped, so I'm just gonna charge this to the game right here. Scoop it right out.
All right, guys, so just to walk you through kind of my experience and uh, what some of my favorite preferences are, um, I usually always prefer to go a cold start. Um, you know, I still use both of these nails to cold start. Typically, when I'm cold starting hash, I'll, uh, I'll put it in my Joel Halen banger. Um, typically, when I'm cold starting rosin, I'll put it over here in my Evan Shore. Uh, there's something I still just love about a, a turp pearl, so uh, that spinning, that visual stimulation. I just love it, man. I still uh, still enjoy it. So just to recap the differences between cold start um, and your traditional dab style, um, you know, if I'm heating it up at first and then I'm gonna drop my concentrate in, I'm typically shooting for somewhere between 420 and 500 degrees. Now, everybody uses a different temperature gauge, so you might get a different temperature range depending on the device you're using to gauge that. They're all different, but um, that's the range that I like to be in because like I said, I'm always going for flavor, man. I, uh, I I've always got a sweet tooth, so I like these these candy strains, man. The straw nanas, the papayas. Um, so that's that's why I go in at a low temp. And if I want to just keep going, I can always reheat to a hotter temperature to convert it more. Uh, if I'm just trying to get ripped, uh, most of the time when you see guys online, you know, taking fat clouds, like they're they're heating it up to about you know. 550 600 degrees i've even seen higher but yeah you'll definitely get more ripped the the hotter the temperature um i'm just trying to savor that flavor most of the time so all right and so for cold starts uh again i'm dropping my concentrate down into the bowl uh then i put my cap on then i'm gonna take my torch heat it up i like to keep it far away from the very tip of that blue flame just so it's a, a nice soft heat all across the bowl. I'm making sure that I'm getting every part of it. And what I'm looking for really is when that concentrate starts to bubble, that's typically when you're gonna start getting a hit off of it. So um, yeah, that's, that's how you do a cold start. But yeah, these are just some of my preferences, some of my favorite tools. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, be sure to comment, let us know what your setups are, uh, what you like, if you've got a better way of doing it, uh, be sure to put us on game. Uh, be sure to follow us on all of our social media at Go Peer Pressure. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.